Hello all. Um, so we have covered calf management and heifer management during previous lectures and today we start the uh, management of the dairy cow. Right, so dairy cow management is the third uh, and last topic. So by now you should know all of this. Give me a second. Right, so by now you should know when to wean, when to breed, when to calve you know the uh, all the body um, the the body weight ratios age and all this right so right now we are here right so we are right about here and we'll be covering the rest of these topics during the next few lectures right so you already know about this um the the life cycle right different time points major landmark events right so you know all this Right, so I'm not going to spend time on this. Um, right, so we haven't come to that topic yet. Right, so you know all these. Right, so you know um, the the intercalving interval. Right, we've briefly talked about it. We'll uh, go into details on that. Right, um, right. So you know the seasonality. Right, um, I mentioned this earlier. Uh, this cycle is based on the natural seasonality, right? Um, so uh, during winter time, uh, nutrients are low, therefore animal is not so active, right? Uh, metabolism wise, so right, that, that's when the animal is kind of resting, however, harboring a pregnancy and then it's spring calving and then nutrient levels go up, forages grow with spring and summer, then nutrients Three uh, levels go up in car, uh, cattle, breed, and become pregnant and stay pregnant throughout autumn and winter, fall or autumn and winter, and then spring calving. Right, so that is the natural cycle in a uh, in a temperate country, and uh, even in a tropical country. Uh, you don't see this seasonality however in certain situations you can see seasonality due to rain season and dry season right even in Sri Lanka uh, towards the northern province eastern province where the dry period is pronounced uh, you can see that animals won't come into heat during the dry period because of the low nutrition and adverse weather conditions but as weather and nutrient levels go up um, you know it improves and they come into heat right so uh, that kind of thing you can observe in Sri Lanka as well right so you should have a good understanding of this uh, right so this is the intercalving interval that I was talking about intercalving interval or intercalving period um, so this is made up of you can say either the lactation period plus dry period or pregnant and non-pregnant period right also called the open period uh, which is further divided into voluntary waiting period and breeding period we'll go into details on those right um, so basically intercalving interval intercalving right interval between two consecutive carvings right so this should ideally be one year right because it's seasonality because of the seasonal nature in nature right so every spring there will be a calf meaning it's a 12 month interval right okay so uh, you i would have mentioned most of these terms as we went on right but you should know this if you don't know these terms look them up uh, what's meant by a pre-fresh cow what's a post fresh cow what's the what's what, what you mean by the early fresh period what is freshening what are springer cows right uh, transition cow you know so you should all you know should know this stuff right steer bull so these are some dairy specific uh, jargon that you have to be familiar with we can always quiz you on these terms right? and you you might see them during uh, in uh, uh, exams also so you should if you don't know the term right if I ask you 
um, okay list five clinical conditions in fresh cows or in transition cows you know I'm expecting you to list down clinical conditions specifically in fresh cows if you just tell me five diseases in cows you know you won't get marks right so you need to know these terms what is meant by each of these terms right so uh, under this topic dairy cow management this is part one we will be talking about the milking cow the dry cow and the transition cow mainly and under each of these topics uh, we will also be talking about their nutrition housing milking management in this group and animal welfare and we'll, we'll finish the series off with you know culling and herd composition right um, so as I mentioned earlier the intercalving interval is either lactation plus dry period which is one year or pregnant plus non-pregnant period which again should ideally be one year right so both of these should ideally be one year you should know by now uh, you know how to fill this spacer right so these these call the open period right so do a calculation and see um, so as you can would imagine um, this is not fixed right lactation period it can be 150 days it can be 200 days it can be 305 days it can be 400 days right however this is fixed right so this is fixed gestation length is relatively fixed because anything in nature you can't draw a line and say okay this is exactly this many days right but it uh, fluctuates within a relatively short period you know uh, maybe as early as 265 days and maybe later as 285 to 90 days in extreme cases right um, but usually averages around 275 to 80 days you know as time goes by people have been selecting for shorter gestation lengths and so nowadays it's not uncommon to see um, cows with gestation periods you know shorter than even 75 days right but uh, you know traditionally it was around 282 285 days right so do a calculation and see if you want to maintain an intercalving interval of one year right what is the maximum open period you can afford to have right so if the open period goes beyond a certain number of days you cannot get a one year intercalving interval right the inter period between two carvings would be longer than um, one year right so what is the critical event that determines this right so why can't you get a short open period right that that is actually a problem not only in sri lanka but the, the all over the world um, that the open period is longer than what you ideally want it to be so think about that what is that critical event that delays or that prolongs the open period and prolongs the intercalving interval right just just give it a thought okay right so this lactation period right so this is dry period the lactation period we divide into three sections segments called the early lactation period mid lactation period and late lactation period right so we do this for a reason uh, mainly for easy management purposes right um, so just think about this why why would you want these three groups to be managed differently right uh, what might be different within between these groups right so I mean if everything was the same among these three groups then there is no point categorizing them as early mid and late lactation cows right but we categorize them into three different groups because because something is different right management fine so if management is different that means that physiology may be different so think about those for a second right? so pause the video think about those and come back right? so I, I hope you paused the video and gave it some thought right so think in terms of production right reproduction health 
demands right uh, nutritional demands right so so think in those terms and you know in the situation of um, the natural seasonality right so think of that seasonal effect also right so what which group do you think is the highest producing group you know daily milk yield wise right so it's, it's usually this group and which group do you think is the lowest production group that would be the late lactation group so if this group has high production levels which means it's natural demands nutrition demands are higher if this group has lower production that means their demands are lower they will eat less right they will eat less both quantity and quality wise you can lower it right so that you can get a higher profit margin right so all this is to do with economics right so these are the reasons why we categorize them differently so think about those what differences those might be right and why we categorize them differently right uh, okay so basically four groups of course even within these groups especially between in uh, this group you know you might further divide um, so, so some of these groups right and then there will be other grouping systems also not only by stage of lactation but they may be categorized on different uh, criteria can you think of those what those other criteria might be right so it's, it's to do with production right so think about this okay let's say there are most of these animals are high producers let's say when i say high producers 40 liters and above a day production and there are a few animals who are still in early lactation however they are low producers say 10 liters for some reason right so what do you think makes sense to have these low producers in the early lactation group just because you know they are gestation after gestation they are just fresh cows or would it make more sense to uh, group them with this group or this group right so it makes more sense to group them here because these guys are probably receiving a low quality low quantity diet right um, so like I said so there, there are certain farms that categorize animals based on their lactation levels also right not just gestation length right okay good right um, so I hope your answers had these components right um, so early lactation uh, like I said you can see milk production peaks during early lactation right so initially it's lower then it peaks right then during mid lactation it comes down and in late lactation it comes all the way down and is dried up right look at the feed intake feed intake is low during early lactation and then peaks during mid lactation and then comes down again in late lactation right and then body weight right say there's a rapid decline in body weight and body condition score which we will talk about shortly and then the animal slowly gains it and then after a certain point in late lactation the body weight gain increases right because the production levels go down and the animal can afford to uh, divert energy towards regaining this body weight right right and then uh, something that's not mentioned here is the reproductive uh, management um, so where do you think uh, the farmer has to intervene as far as reproduction goes this group this group or this group uh, so it should be here so the animal calves right here right calving is right here and this is where that open period we talked about is right so the shorter the open period better right but of course you can't get animals pregnant within four weeks right so usually we leave at least 60 days for the animal to recover uh, from the previous pregnancy right uterus has to involute all that right um, so um, so this is that critical period so by having them uh, in early lactation as single group and maybe then even further categorizing them as you know conceived and non-conceived 
right so you can become more efficient in the management reproductive management of these animals right so if i ask you a question on you know uh, compare and contrast these three phases or whatever you need to cover all these aspects are not only milk production not only diet right not only body condition but also reproductive management and there might be certain other things also which i want you to uh, read up on okay so like this curve showed right um so peak lactation takes place during this first phase right which we call early lactation or the first 100 days but you will notice right um, so under different farming systems with different management system with different breeds and different climatic systems right the peak lactation you know can change from place to place from farm to farm from breed to breed right? so according to this graph right peak lactation takes place somewhere around two and a half months one month two months two and a half months which is like 10 weeks right 8 to 10 weeks right uh, however if you you know look at the different breeds so this shows um, uh, lactation yield uh, in host infusions comparing the three first three parities right so this first parity second parity and third parity right you see there's a uh, huge difference between first and second parity right so first parity milk yield is relatively low however the decline is not so prominent right so it, it maintains a relative plateau for a longer period right however during second and third parities that is we, we usually say you can get about 25 30 percent more milk than the first parity right say peak is 30 liters here here 40 liters so that's 30 percent more right and however you'll notice here <clears throat> these uh, according to this chart right the peak is somewhere around here right so maybe on this one the peak is somewhere here you know um so early we said 10 weeks huh? 10 weeks is like 70 days right so maybe you could call the peak is here which is about 70 days maybe yeah huh? 50 days 100 days 75 here right so peak is around there right but as you go towards second and third lactation right so peak is close to right somewhere around here okay somewhere around here which is about 40 to 50 days which is six to seven weeks right so peak is probably somewhere around here right um and um, so our three groups early lactation mid lactation and late lactation would be at 100 and 200 days right so you see um so every month we expect a decline of about eight to twelve percent of course as a good farm manager a good veterinarian your goal is to keep the decline you know close to eight percent not towards twelve percent right so twelve percent decline is you know rapid decline uh, but you want to try and keep it around eight percent so if the animal gave 40 liters at peak right so every month if it was a 10 percent reduction so next month it will be 36 next month it will be uh, uh take of 3.6 something like um 32.4 right and then next month 29 next month 26 point something you know something like that so there is a 8 to 12 percent decline every month right okay um so here are some examples right um so if the peak yield was 15 liters right see if there was a 8% 10% or 12% decline depending on the decline the total lactation yield can vary considerably right so if it was only a 8% decline um, you know the animal will go on to give around 3000 liters but if it was a 12% decline every month right 
animal will go on to give only 2300 so 650 liter difference times 100 rupees 65000 rupees right um, so that's that's a huge quantity right so let's look at a 25 liter animal right the difference is again 5000 3800 right so 1100 liters almost different right which is 110,000 rupees at 100 rupees a liter um, you know certain farms in Sri Lanka get as much as 120 certain farms get as low as 70 so I just average it out at 100 for convenience so remember now sometimes when I ask people okay if an animal gave 20 liters during their peak lactation what do you expect their lactation yield to be they multiply multiply 20 by 300 because 300 days 305 days is the usual lactation length we talk about and they tell me 6000 liters no that is incorrect so remember this is at peak right so this is the the peak lactation right but either side of it is lower than that so to multiply this by 300 is not correct right but what is considered is uh, to multiply this by 200 gives you a it gives you an approximate lactation length uh, yield provided the 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 drop was not too bad right so if it was 8% decline uh, it's approximately 15 times 200 3000 if it was a 12% decline it's approximately 15 times 150 uh, 15 times 150 is 2250 same here 20 times 200 4000 20 times 150 3000 25 times uh, 200 is 5000 25 times 150 is 3750 right so if you know the peak you can estimate the total yield uh, by multiplying it by 150 for rapid decline or 200 for uh, you know good management conditions but ex extremely good management conditions they can they say you can even multiply this by 220 right um, so remember that the total yield is something like 150 to 200 times of the peak lactation because that, sometimes that's uh, a question you get asked by farmers so this animal gave 20 liters uh, at the peak but do I expect it to uh, give for the whole lactation right and so that's something you can also use when purchasing animals who have you know peaked you can say okay this animal gives can be estimated to give this quantity therefore this is the value I'm prepared to pay for the animal right? so you should have a, a basic understanding of that right okay so I, I mean I, I might give you a question say uh, okay an animal gave 20 liters right I, I won't give these numbers I'll give you some different numbers I'll say uh, you know animal gave 30 liters during peak right went on to lactate the entire 305 days right what kind of a total lactation yield would you expect and therefore what is the average milk daily yield you expect right so you can divide this number by 305 and you get this right so you have to have a basic understanding on that right so we uh, in the previous chart we looked at the different parities right uh, and then here we look at different breeds right okay so look at jersey obviously jersey animals are lower producers right and host infusions higher producers right of course see i mean here um, so like, like I said earlier right so depending on the breed depending on the management system depending on the country depending on the climate uh, depending on how much you let them meet right the how soon or late you achieve peak and how long the peak lasts right all depends and how much the decline is so you can appreciate that the decline here is much faster than the decline here right um, so earlier graph animal peak lactation was 30 first parity second third it was 40 
yeah it's that so like so don't 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 hang on to these numbers huh um so this depends on the country the era so this this was 2008 uh, you know from this there's 13 14 15 years ago right um so numbers change right uh, so rapid decline here right so the idea here is uh, uh, the take home message here is you know there are breed differences there are parity differences and however generally speaking uh, all these breeds show the same pattern right so they peak around you know seven eight weeks six seven eight weeks right and then there is a decline relatively similar decline right during between these two animals and then you know by around 300 days it really you know goes down if you keep on lactating animals they will go on to produce they have the capacity to produce even up to 500 days or beyond however from a financial economical business point of view that is not recommended uh, we want another peak here as soon as possible right so that is the take home message here right okay um so remember we were looking at total milk yield here right daily milk yield and if you look at the protein plus fat yield so in sri lanka right we still uh, that's not entirely true uh, we we do look at the, the 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 quality of milk right which is fat we mainly look at fat right uh, but then you know it's uh, it's it's debatable whether we the black milk collectors actually look at the fat or the volume you know that, that's a whole different story which i'm not going to talk about now right but there are certain countries they look at the protein yield or the protein and fat combined yield right um, so they follow a similar pattern but what's uh, more important here is i might ask you you know okay um, so you you can probably tell me this if i ask you okay how much uh, is the daily milk production of an animal you can probably tell me this right but what you may not be able to tell me is um, what if i ask you what the protein or fat yield of a cow will be you may not be able to tell me right so this says um, so you can get as much as two kilos of protein plus fat a day from a cow right that's a lot uh, two kilos is that correct right do you think that's correct how can you do a calculation and see if that is correct okay i'll pause the video do a calculation from your existing knowledge and see if you can get these numbers okay i hope you have done your calculation right so um, we'll, 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 we'll come back to that right so you need to basically know the protein percentage and fat percentage of a liter of milk if you know that you can do that so if you if you still haven't done it now that I have given you a hint pause the video and do the calculation and see if you get these answers right um, so we saw the parity breed differences as well as the similarities um, so this study from 2016 right so they go on to look at the lactation curve uh, based on season of calving in Holsteins and you can see right um, autumn fall calving right um, the milk yield is slightly higher right however the pattern is more or less the same so although it's against natural um, curve uh, then then again I'm, I'm, I'm not yeah yeah so right but 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 what you need to so although I said fall is higher that is just a you know observation I haven't done any statistics ideally you need to say that after doing statistics now that you all have done statistics right you have to see if that is a statistically significant difference right okay the difference between spring and autumn okay right um right so um so we saw right second and third parity were higher than 
first parity. But how long does it go on for? Fourth parity is higher than third parity, fifth parity is higher, sixth parity is higher, or does it come down at a certain level? Right? So this is milk yield, mean three or five day milk yield uh, for parities one, two, three, four, and higher than five. So you will see here, you know, the increases 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, 10,800, and it drops, right? But like, again, uh, statistics come into uh, play. You cannot make such statements just by looking at numbers right so this is where you need statistics are these statistics different indeed they are see different letters a b c d denote significant differences at p uh, less than one percent right um so a b c d are different but what shows here is after five right so you they take milk yields uh, uh, after five in the same group they are not different to fourth lactation, right? So they are still higher than C, A, A, B, C, first, second, and third. However, they are not higher than fourth lactation. Right? So it doesn't mean they are lower either. If they were lower, you will get a different number here. You will either get A, B, C or, or an E, right? However, they are not low. They are not, not different. So the absolute number here is different. However, they are not statistically significant, right? That you need to understand, right? Not going to spend more time on that because it's not a statistics lecture, but you need to understand that if you don't know this, right? Please uh, refresh or brush up your mem uh, knowledge on this. That is important. Right, so I talked about uh, the fat percentages and the protein percentages briefly. Um, now, uh, so the take-home message from what I'm trying to show you within the next few slides is that there is no set value right all these figures depend on the breeds right so you see they are different for each breed Holstein um, lactation yield is that so this is in Canada this is not old information this is relatively new information right almost 11,000 kilos right um, Jersey 7,000 short horn um, right Guernsey, Brown Swiss, Ayrshire, right? So that's the, the total lactation yield. Look at the fat percentage. 4% Jersey, we all know, high fat. 5%, 4.7, right? So on. Protein, protein is relatively more constant than fat. Doesn't uh, uh, fluctuate a lot because with the protein, you can have as low as 4%. And as high, high as five percent, five plus. You'll see in the next few slides there are breeds in certain countries that give as much as six percent or more, right? Uh, but protein is relatively steady, three point three, right? Three point four, right? Um, so Jersey again has high protein. So this is why, right? Even if the the lactation yield is lower, right? The farmer might still be able to make more money if he's paid by protein and fat, right? So remember that. Um, so just because the host inflation animals give you more milk, it doesn't mean they are more profitable, right? Because these animals can give more protein and fat as well as, you know, small animals, they eat less, right? Uh, maintenance is relatively free. Uh, you know, as far as our climate goes, they are more suitable to our climate, more tropical country resistant, right? So those kinds of things. Right? So, okay, so these figures are from Canada. Now let's look at some figures from different countries. Canada, US, South Korea, Denmark, right? Uh, okay, let's look at um, Jersey. So these were the numbers we saw in the earlier slide, right? United States, right? So in Canada, see 10,900, US 11,600, so almost 700 kilos more, right? That's about, you know, 5% more milk, 6% more milk. Fat is lower than Canada, 
so which protein is more or less the same 3.27 3.31 now look at Denmark hosting milk yield is slightly lower but higher than Canada look at fat is higher protein is higher right now look let's look at jerseys Canada 7000 5.17 3.87 US higher yield slightly lower fat and protein Denmark 6% fat 4.27% protein right so even higher than Canada so that's that's what I'm trying to show you right so this doesn't happen randomly right how do you think this has happened big difference 6% fat versus 4.88 3.27 4 protein versus 3.85 protein how, what, what do you think is causing this difference huh? pause the video and think for a second Right, so I'm, I'm sure some of you all said uh, uh, genetic you can't say breed differences because the same breed right but they can be different families different lines different pedigrees right and they have been bred they have been selected for these traits right so um, I, I, I already uh, showed you during our uh, heifer selection calf selection uh, lectures that you can select bulls based on their you know daughter milk yield daughter fat percentage daughter protein percentage right so if these guys if the Danish national policy said okay every country has a breeding policy right so maybe their national breeding policy says you know you have to breed uh, you have to select semen of bulls with predicted transmitting abilities uh, of more than six percent fat or five point five percent fat, right? So that that's what causes these differences. It, this that cannot happen overnight. This cannot happen within a decade, right? But over many decades, you know, fifty, sixty, hundred years, this can happen. You can see such dramatic differences between uh, in the within the same breed, but within different countries, within different ecosystems, and so on. Right, so the take home message here I'm not expecting you to, you know, memorize these figures for each country, each breed, right? But what I do expect you uh, from you is to give me a ballpark figure. If I ask you what the pro typical protein percentage of milk is, if you tell me 2.5 or 4 percent, 4.5, wrong answer, right? So we, I'm expecting somewhere around 3.3 to 3.5 similarly with fat also you know I, I will ask you the jersey versus Holstein fish and you know you should be able to give me a uh, acceptable answer right okay so I, I hope all that is clear and I hope whoever did not do that previous calculation of protein yield plus fat yield per liter per day right, you will be able to give me a, a decent answer by after looking at this slide right okay um, right so now say look at this column it says milk per recorded cow in 305 days right so what does it mean uh, it means multiple things here right so not all cows are subjected to milk recording uh, so the, the general term we use in the field is milk recording when we say milk recording that means recording of lactation data uh, you know in animals right so in Sri Lanka this is not done right in certain countries they do it every day for every animal right in certain countries they don't do every day for every animal but they will do it periodically right um, so anyway you have to have some kind of recording it's not easy task it's not an easy task like right? you have thousand animals uh, to measure their milk volume every day you know practically very difficult I mean, uh, and economically you know from a business point of view not required and you know it 
can incur so many costs and time investment right labor investment so therefore not many people do it right but however in certain nowadays there are automated systems right so the moment the animal walks into the milk parlor, it has an electronic chip id identification chip right and then the the machine recognizes okay this is this animal sumana today gave 25 liters yesterday she gave 28 you know so the re recording will be automatically uh, recorded right milk yield same happens to protein percentage fat percentage auto analyzer right sometimes it doesn't uh, they don't do this for individual animals but they would do it for the bulk tank right um, so it's it's in, in, in the steel situation it's a little more complicated than a set table like this right so anyway the two points i wanted to make sure show you here is it says milk per recorded cow right so the non-recorded cows uh, i'm pretty sure the averages would be the same right but you know so but this calculation only takes into consideration uh, the numbers from recorded cows right and then it also says 305 days now do you think all of these animals lactated exactly 305 days and they were dried off on the 305th or 6th day right no that is not practically possible so what they do is they use something called a 3052xme right um so before we define that what, what do you think will be different differences among these animals different breeds different countries right so for one like i said earlier certain animals may have only milked up to 280 days some animals would have given only up to 150 days does it mean just because this animal gave only 280 days you are going to discard that data right or oh, so another animal lactated 350 days didn't get pregnant therefore had a long intercalving interval long lactation period went on to give milk for 380 days are you going to discard that data just because it didn't stop lactation exactly at 305 days right okay some of these animals were milked only once a day some were milked twice a day some were milked thrice a day do you think that once a day versus twice a day versus thrice a day milking has an effect on the total yield right so let's say um let's say identical twins right um same management same nutrition same farm same climate same everything one animal was milked once a day the other animal was milked twice a day which animal will give more milk at the end of the 305 days the animal that was milked twice a day why because the in the animal that was milk once a day what do you think happens what causes reduction of total milk yield take a second if you answered negative inhibition at the level of the mammary glands you got it right right because when you have you you, you have done your biochemistry all the pathways right you see negative feedback inhibition all the time negative feedback loops right if your mammary glands are full of milk there will be a signal uh, going up to the milk secreting alveolar cells say okay we are full you know pause or halt production for now until we are empty right so then only after the animal is milked next day morning because they may be milked once a day alveolar cell cells will start to secrete milk again but in the animal that is milked twice or thrice a day milk is being removed faster therefore negative feedback inhibition is removed quickly right so therefore that animal will go on to produce more milk right so but that doesn't mean we should throw away that valuable data point in a calculation like this right so that is why they have come up with this thing called 3052xme which stands for 305 days twice a day milking milk equivalent right so they standardize everything whether they are milked once a day twice a day thrice a day or whether they lactated 150 days 200 days 250 days 300 305 400 days they standardize everything into this right so the definition is the lactation record for a cow with a minimum of 50 days milk 
and is extended to 305 days adjusted for location age season of calving uh, to a mature cow basis adjusted to twice a day milking right okay so that is what this is right so you need to remember um, this is not a simple calculation let's say if one animal milk 150 days gave 3000 liters uh, right that doesn't mean 3 or 5 days is 3000 times 2 right because as you can recall the first 150 days it produces more milk right so next 150 days it doesn't produce more milk right so it's not a simple calculation like that it's a complex calculation there are you know a series of formulas right so you have to factor in all of those uh, when doing this calculation right okay so we have talked about um, some of the fundamentals right um, we have talked about these right so now right now chart we saw as a single chart it's been broken up into milk production feed intake dry matter intake and body weight right um, so you should know what happens in each of these phases what are the characteristic features of each of these phases right uh, we have seen this and I also mentioned about the open period and the reproductive management right so one thing important here is this that we have not talked about right so you notice here the animal produces peak milk in early lactation right however the feed intake peaks in mid lactation kind of doesn't make sense right if the animal peaked peak milk production was in early lactation it would make sense for the animals feed intake also to peak in par with the milk production right however that is not how it works for some reason right uh, some reason we will talk about that later right so because of this natural phenomenon right so this resembles energy input or output energy output right energy required to produce milk and this in represents energy input right so because of this disparity right energy input is lower so that's the energy input huh? energy ingested or energy input to the animal is lower than the energy output from milk during this phase right so how can that be right if you have I can't eat 50 kilojoules and give out 100 kilojoules can I any biological system whether it's a tree a cell a uh, human being uh, protozoa uh, covid virus sars cov2 virus or car engine right no system is 100 percent efficient efficiency is always lower than 100 percent so if efficiency is 100 less than 100 percent that means output cannot be higher than input input is always higher than output right if you give somebody 100 of anything you won't get 100 right whether it's food uh, or studies or love right it's hard to get back the entire hundred right you'll get less than what you give uh, hopefully not love for you right um, but um, so so then how can this be so that is that is you know different to all the fundamental principles you give you give the animal you know let's say here uh, 15 mega calories worth of energy and the animal gives you 22 that sounds like a fantastic deal right how the how does that how is that possible now think about it for a second pause the video and think about it right okay so if you thought okay animal does that by mobilizing stored energy in the body you answered right right so what happens during this phase is uh, animal uses energy stored as body fat right uh, animal mobilizes energy from this body fat and uses that energy to produce milk right so but what that does is mobilizing means body fat storages are broken down 
converted to energy right and used here which means body fat levels go down right now that might be a good thing for somebody like me uh, with a big stomach right but for a dairy cow I, I don't know if that is such a big thing good thing right um, so so this is reflected as the body condition score we say animals body condition score goes down because animals body fat resources are being depleted right so this is a cycle this happens every cycle during the early lactation phase right animal will mobilize stored body fat resources and use for milk production and then in the mid lactation and late lactation period animals intake goes above output right so gives the animal a chance to replenish to restore those sources that were previously used up okay i, I hope that is clear right so here the the body stores were used for production of milk but during mid and late lactation animal restores those depleted uh, reserves and um, stored as body fat for the next cycle right so during the next lactation whatever that was stored here will again be used up for production of milk right so i, I hope that is clear this goes on every cycle right so this is you cannot prevent this right however much you feed animals have been selected for this right dairy cows have been selected over centuries and centuries for their ability to mobilize body fat however they can only do it to a certain extent if you just let the animal be okay this animal is a highly profitable animal however much uh, you know its milk production capacities it will produce by mobilizing its body fat stores I'm not going to feed you anything cow a loving cow you keep on producing milk with your body fat stores I won't feed you anything because you have you have stored so much energy during your previous lactation late lactation period so that does not work right if you keep doing if you stress the system too much right so the animal will uh, have a high risk of uh, getting sick right so the, the certain uh, group of diseases here we will talk about those later, later right so remember that right um, so this period we call the negative energy balance the animal has a negative energy balance and here animal has a positive energy balance where after the input ingested energy is greater than energy spent right so that is a positive energy balance but most of it is negative energy balance right okay um, right right um, so remember uh, when if they lose uh, the body condition score too much right there is a risk of becoming too thin and diseased and fertility also suffers right so for animals to be fertile to get pregnant right remember that open period that we talked about if you want to keep the open period relatively short you have to you have to keep uh, the the you have to control the loss of body condition score if there is excessive loss of body condition right then you won't be able to get the animal pregnant soon enough okay so keep that in mind right okay so then what are the numbers so i said it shouldn't go below a certain level what are these numbers what is the number here what is the lowest number recommended what is the highest number recommended when should you regain this high number right is it during mid lactation is it during late lactation is it during dry period right so this slide show you shows you some key body conditions correlated targets right what you should have at calving what you should have what should be the maximum loss right and so on right so read up on this and you will also see that different countries recommend different uh, 
rages right um so um, according to this right so this the accepted one generally in the australia new zealand region 3.25 at the point of carving right um and uh, but if you so if you if you look at the us documents is slightly different right the us documents are about 0.25 higher than that right so they would say so these uh, us um, purdue university right um, uh, so their recommendations are average 3.5 minimum 3.25 to 3.75 maximum right but here australian recommendation average 3.25 minimum 3 3 to 3.5 is the range but here 0.25 higher but you, you need to have a generally good idea of this uh, I, I might ask you what is the lowest body condition score you can expect right um, in during peak milk production so on so you have to have an idea when do they regain the 3.5 or 3.25 back when do they have the lowest body condition score what is the best time period for regaining lost body condition score and so on and so forth right um right so so just read up on these now huh? what happens by advantages and disadvantages of maintaining optimal body condition score so remember i, I told you earlier right um about you know the production reproduction aspects of different stages so all these are interconnected right so look at these different diseases right um, so these these you need to be aware of right right now body condition score is there are different three different systems used the world over sri lanka uses a five point scale right so the poorest uh, body condition scores close to one Be highest body condition scores close to five right so one to five scale but there are also eight point and ten point scale of body condition scoring as well right but regardless of the scale the pattern is this right the pattern is this gets lowest body condition score around peak milk production which was you know maybe said six seven weeks 50 days right okay now this is really important i'm not going to go through these slides you will have to um, uh, self-study this you can't this is not something you can um, gain during a lecture you have to go to a farm we have already done this uh, we may have already done this at lecture uh, at farm right depending on the group right so this is something you need to practice at a farm by looking at this you know uh, the, the 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 theoretical aspect right so i have uh, these are straight copy and paste from this web url right so this is at cornell university however this is uh, being produced by a company called elanco right you can download it using this link right um so there are there are certain anatomical landmarks we use right hook bone pin bone tail head ligament thurl right there's something called thurl right and then sacral ligaments so on right um, so the your first job is to categorize by looking at the third whether the animal is having a body condition score of lower than three or higher than three right so if it's lower than three the third has a v shape if it's higher than three the third has a u shape right you don't get this angle at this corner right um so depending on that right that is your first that, that is where you start afterwards if it's lower than three you know you look at these criteria i'm not going to go through those in detail now right and based on that if that is the observation it's three if this observation is 2.75 if that is the observation it's 2.5 less than 2.75 and so on and so forth you can go on till uh, less than two right but if it was u-shaped then it is above three then you look at certain other anatomical landmarks right so if it, if you see this it's 3.25 that is what you see it's 3.5 
if that is what you see is 3.75 or higher and so on right so i, I urge you to i strongly urge you to uh, download this guide from uh, this web url and to you know practice that at a farm until you are thoroughly familiar because it, that's really important to be able to uh, evaluate body condition score by 0.25 scale right 0.25 so that you can coordinate all those correlate all those with those body condition score uh, the key figures that i talked about right um, right so it's almost like a kpi right so uh, if you do if you cannot evaluate body condition score properly you can't say okay uh, is this animal being properly fed or not or if something is going wrong you cannot say any of that without being able to give the evaluate the body condition score properly right so this is a really important skill to develop right so so earlier i said you know you should try to keep the body condition loss to no more than 0.5 right however in reality there are animals that lose less than 0.5 or even more than 0.5 or more than one see see what happens so when the body condition loss is higher right body condition loss is higher first day to ovulation is higher day to first heat is higher first service is higher right first service conception rate is lower right services per conception higher right okay so again statistics so think about what's meant here a a b right a b but what does this mean right so think about the right um so that is why we have to try and maintain the loss of body condition to less than 0.5 right so if the animal was 3.25 at calving we should try to keep the body condition loss to no more than 2.75 if it goes below 2.75 then you might uh you know have trouble animal getting pregnant and other various stuff right okay so something you need to memorize almost is uh generally each unit of body condition score that means four to three or three to two or five to four each unit right is usually about eight percent of the body weight so if it's a 500 kilogram animal right if the animal loses body condition score from 4 to 3, how many kilos of fat is that? 8% of 500 kilos, uh, that's about how much? Okay, you do that calculation. And generally, it is also about 1 centimeter of back fat, right? So you see, this is a animal with high or poor body condition score. A very high uh, body condition score this is an animal with poor body condition score and you see uh, for loss of each body condition score right see from 2 to 3 body fat 10 10 millimeters 3 to 4 another 10 right so generally about uh, 10 millimeters or 1 centimeter for a unit of body condition score right and number of kilos like I said, about 8%. So you do the calculation and see. And remember, this is not for all animals. Huh? This is for generally about 500, 600 kilogram animals. This won't be the same for local animals weighing 350 kilos. Uh, it won't be the same for massive animals with, you know, 1,200 kilogram bulls. This is for 600, 700 kilo animals. Generally, this is a rule of thumb. Huh? But but it's you you it's not a uh, it's not written in concrete right okay so now that you have a generally good understanding of uh, body condition score see if you can um, draw the fluctuation of body condition score during these different phases right so note that the previous charts that we studied started at calving now here i have deliberately started this at mid lactation to see what you will come up with right so don't don't worry about uh, getting this perfect uh, don't don't i mean don't 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 look at the don't refer the previous slides so try to 
draw this up from whatever you have understood so far and then go back to the previous slides uh, to see if you got it correct right so we talked about most of these things um, briefly the open period uh, we said that was the interval between carving to reconception right carving to reconception period so this is essentially a non-pregnant period right and then uh, we divided this into voluntary waiting period and a breeding period right i'm not going to go through uh, each detail here but this generally is a period where we don't breed the animal we voluntarily right wait right we voluntarily wait we even if the animal comes to heat sometimes animals do come to heat right we skip it we skip it and uh, generally about 45 to 60 days we don't make an effort to breed we keep them away from the bull or inseminator we do even if they come into heat we just let them rest right so think why we do that right so these are self-explanatory um, right so if the animal become, becomes pregnant or conceives in the very first breeding very first AI or natural breeding you know voluntary waiting period equals open period but unfortunately that is not how reality works uh, in some certain cases doesn't conceive with the first breeding 21 days doesn't conceive with the second breeding uh, if you're lucky it will conceive on the third breeding but there are sometimes there will be animals that you will have to do a fourth breeding also if nothing works sometimes you just cull these animals who are resistant to get conceived right so that's just how nature works right right so in such a case open period is much longer than the voluntary waiting period but in this case open period was the same as the voluntary waiting period right right so some uh, new information relatively new information so read this also not new anymore 10 years now right um, so learn about this reproduction information so I'm not going to go into details you'll these lectures will be covered regardless uh, do do visit this uh, do read this at your leisure right um, so this open period right I said uh, we wait for 60 days some animals may come to heat some animals won't right so there is a period of anestress right? so this is a we call this the postpartum anestress interval right um, so there are anestress other anestress periods in cows right so those are the ones examples right and this is a postpartum uh, interval right postpartum and stress interval right, so why do they need this uh, i asked this question earlier if you said okay the uterus needs a rest uterus needs to get back to normal now the uterus has been highly expanded and you know morphologically physiologically uh, you know changed challenged it needs a rest to go back to normalcy to be able to accept another pregnancy right um, so see there is about a 12 times expansion of the uterus weight uh, so this is not excluding the fetus huh? fetus is 30 40 kilos so this 10 kilograms is only the uterine tissue right it has to come back to you know 800 grams or whatever and this doesn't happen overnight so until then you know there is a refractory period or a resting period or you know restoration of the uterus right so that is why animal will not come into heat these days postpartum and stress right and even the hormones you know they have to come back to normal right um, so this postpartum uh, and stress interval you know it is dependent on so many things here comparing you know to uh, boss indicus breeds nallur nallur and uh, and cemental right uh, boss indicus versus boss taurus right so this is actually also a, a, a tropical scene in countries like italy right 
um so see see what you can understand with this right so breed is one thing and uh, it also there are other factors also that affect the length of this right okay so that concludes this section right the is kind of like an introduction to the lactating animal right the the, the dairy cow right so we will cover the milking management dry period transition period etc 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 in future lectures okay thank you very much